What is up everybody? It's 414 Anime here for Anime Uproar and today I will be breaking down and explaining every Sternritter's power from the Bleach series. So the Sternritter are all insanely powerful Quincy and are the biggest and most powerful force in all of Bleach, introduced of course in the Thousand Year Blood War arc. So today I thought it'd be pretty fun to break down each of the Sternritter and their powers and abilities. Now, if you do enjoy these Bleach videos on the channel and you'd like to see more, you know what to do, of course, smash that like button as it really does help us out with that YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, make this the video that you subscribe and hit that notification bell to turn on all notifications. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at anime uproar and of course now without further ado let's jump into it spoilers and all the sternritter are made up of 26 very powerful quincy that are all equal or greater than captain level power these quincy are tasked with the invasion and complete destruction of the soul society and with it the shinigami now sternritter is the german word for star knights and the japanese word for star cross knight order each of the Sternritter underwent a ritual in which they would drink the blood of Yuha, the man who they serve as pretty much their own god. Upon drinking Yuha's blood, he would carve a part of his very own soul into that Quincy in the form of a letter that will grant that Sternritter their own unique powers and abilities called a shrift. The letter is a sort of designation within the alphabet and the letter corresponds to the Quincy's own personality, deeming what their abilities will be. Now, if a Sternritter were to die, their granted powers would then be returned to Yuha. Interestingly, there were two Sternritter who were not granted new powers upon the initial in-soul writing ritual. These were Pernida and Gerard Valkyrie, who already possessed unique powers of their own and instead received a shrift in recognition of their status. Now, the Sternritter are a very interesting bunch, and what sets them apart from the Asparta is that there is not any ranking involved within them. They are all created to be a unified fighting force. Of course, Yuha is their leader, and then we've got Jugram, who holds the title of the Sternritter Grandmaster, who, you know, acts as Yuha's right hand man. Yuha also has four Sternritter, who are appointed as his own elite guard, called the Schutstaffel. But that's about it when it comes to rank. Yuha wants to keep his Sternritter fighting on the same page, you know, as a uniformed and well-organized fighting force. There is even a law that forbids the Sternritter from fighting amongst each other on pain of death. So with that breakdown on what the Sternritter are, let's look into every Sternritter's power in alphabetical order. So Uryu Ishida is first up as the letter A, which stands for Anethesis. His power Anethesis, which is Japanese for perfect anti-setup, allows Uryu to designate any two targets that he so chooses and can completely reverse anything that has occurred between the two of them. For example, if Uryu had been severely injured while fighting an enemy, he could designate both himself and his enemy as targets and then reverse what had just happened to him so that he would be healed and the damage that he suffered would then be dished out to his opponent, which is pretty gnarly. Uryu's holy weapon is a holy or sacred bow that is light blue colored and about the same length as Uryu himself. It has a thinner handle compared to his other bows and the bow itself splits into a cross-like shape. This bow allows Uryu to fire up holy arrows or sacred destruction arrows. These arrows are like his normal ones in which he pulls in reishi from his surrounding area that manifest into the arrows that he can fire, but these ones are different in their appearance. When using this bow, Uryu also has an ability called Light Rain, where he no longer needs to visibly collect Reishi in preparation for the attack, but instead can unleash a load of arrows at his target in an instant. Jugram is the Sternritter Grandmaster, and his designation is the letter B, which stands for the Balance. The balance, which is Japanese for world harmony, is somewhat similar to Uryu's in that Jugram can take the misfortune that happens within his circle of influence and then disperse that to those that have experienced good fortune themselves. So just like Uryu's power, if Jugram were to receive bad damage himself, he could then take the damage that he had just suffered and then inflict those same wounds onto his target who was experiencing good fortune themselves. 
This act balances the scales as their good fortune is mixed with the bad fortune, bringing said balance back into play. Now, Jogram's spirit weapon is the Friend Shield, or Sacrifice Shield. Through Reishi, Jogram can manifest this shield on his left arm that is not only very strong, but also just as sturdy. Rather than acting as a normal shield in which you would imagine to block incoming attacks from his enemies, the shield actually absorbs the misfortune that Jogram would suffer, such as the before-mentioned injuries. Doing this, Jogram avoids most attacks coming at him, directs them to his shield, and then using the balance, fires that back at his opponent. Jogram is also the only Quincy other than Yuha himself who can impart his own power into another Quincy. He is also not like the other Quincy in which he can't naturally absorb Reishi from his surroundings, but instead is able to give Reishi to those around him. Interestingly, Jogram also has Yuha's power, the Almighty, which in Japanese means all-knowing and all-powerful. At night, while Yuha falls asleep, the power of the Almighty is Jogram's to use, but only while Yuha sleeps. The power allows Jogram to see into the future, but cannot alter the future, just like Yuha can. Next up is Pernida, one of Yuha's shoot staffle, and also the left hand of the Soul King, whose designation is C for the Compulsory. The Compulsory is a power that isn't actually a shrift given to him by Yuha, but an ability that he had already possessed. Here, Pernida can shoot his nerves from its fingers that will then attach to its opponent's body. Once attached, Pernida can control its target's body through his own nerves. Not only can he control the movements of their body, but he can also tear their body apart in a mere instant too, if he so wished to. Panita can also use its nerves on non-living objects and surroundings so that it can control the shape of them. It used this technique to spawn giant arms and hands from the ground and buildings to attack its enemies. Panita can also use the compulsory remotely if one of its fingers had been severed. An eye opens on the knuckle of the finger that was removed. Now, Panita's spirit weapon is a holy or sacred bow that looks like a traditional bow and arrow that is wielded between its ring and index fingers, firing the bow with its thumb. With the bow also comes the holy arrows. These arrows are extremely powerful, with just one arrow wielding the destructive power to take out an entire tower. Another cool thing is that Panita can fuse its nerves with the arrows so that he can hit a target at greater distances. Askin is another of Yuha's shoot staffle, and the stern ritter with the designation of D, which stands for the Death Dealing. The Death Dealing, which means lethal dose, is a power where Askin can calculate the perfect lethal dose that will cause death on his targets without fail, using any substance he takes into his own body, both raising and lowering its value as he so chooses, and then inducing that lethal dose into those around him. As an example, Askin needs to consume a lot of whatever it is that he wants to manipulate into his own body. Let's say, blood. He can then decrease the lethal dosage of the blood in his opponent's body, making it fatal to them. Now, he has multiple abilities on show here, which include the power to heal himself by raising the lethal dosage. Askin also develops an immunity to substances or energy-based attacks he is attacked with. Then there is Gift Ball, which is basically a small ball of poison that is potent enough to drop most enemies upon contact. Askin can also fill the gift balls with other substances such as nitrogen, oxygen, and even reishi. He also has the gift bad where he creates a larger circle on the ground which becomes a dark area of his influence. Anyone that steps within that boundary will be affected as he can lower that person's resistance to absolutely anything. This causes them to be poisoned by high amounts of whichever substance that he so chooses. Now, his spirit weapon is that, again, of a holy bow. His bow handle is made up of several small bands that wrap around his wrist and then spiral into a normal-looking bow. The holy arrows that Askin can fire are pretty long arrows compared to the normal ones, and he can fire two of these arrows at once. Not only that, but he can also fire arrows from his index finger. Askin also has a Quincy Vol standing called Hashin, which is Japanese for God's Poison Tester. In this form, Askin gains angelic wings, but his look like molecular sequences and has the same structure around his waist like a belt. 
His vol standing also enhances the power of his death dealing, directly affecting the changes in the poison to the point where Askin becomes immune to it and you know, is prevented from harm himself. He has multiple abilities, including Gift Ball Deluxe, which is basically a much larger version of the Gift Ball that we had already talked about. Poison Realm is a large barrier of light that cannot be escaped from. Then there is Gift Ring, where Askin enlarges the bracelet on his arm and throws it at his opponent. The part of the body that this bracelet strikes forces the potency of the death dealing to that exact point, which in many cases causes an instant death. Finally, Askin has also been seen to use a Reishi Staff when he is forced to fight in close combat in this form. Bambietta's designation is E for the Explode. The Explode, which is Japanese for Bombing Rain, is a power in which Bambietta can create explosives or bombs that she will rain down upon her enemy. These aren't actually bombs made of reishi themselves, but reishi that turn anything that it comes into contact with into bombs, meaning that her attacks are ones that cannot be blocked. She can not only target specific enemies, but also large areas, causing a huge amount of destructive damage. Bambietta can also generate explosive energy around herself, which looks like that of a very large sphere. Now, Bambietta can transform concentrated reishi into weapons, but her favorite spirit weapon is that of a reishi sword that looks like that of a broadsword. Bambietta's Quincy Vol Standing gives her the ability of flight through giant reishi wings that she can then fly through the air at high speeds. Her vol standing also enhances the explode by releasing orbs of reishi from underneath her wings. By doing this, she can create a large amount of these orbs, which will cover a greater area. Anything that comes into contact with these reishi orbs become bombs that will explode near instantly. As Knot's designation is the letter F for the fear. His spirit weapon is that of several reishi thorns that float in close proximity of him. These thorns are fired at his enemies with great speeds, impaling them in a very, very nasty manner. His ability, the fear, is tied into these reishi thorns he wields. Not only can these things cause great destructive power, but when used with the fear, they cause the target to feel a limitless fear themselves when they are struck by these thorns. Now, this causes his enemies to lose all control of themselves and doubt everything that they are doing. They lose all sense of themselves and are met with visions of their own greatest fears. In some cases, this has even led to death due to that person's heart giving out due to the intense shock that they were going through. Now, his vol standing is called Tartaphorus, which means fear of God. The look of his vol standing is absolutely terrifying and without a doubt, one of the best vol standing designs in my own personal opinion. His vol standing, of course, greatly enhances his ability, the fear. So rather than being pierced by his thorns, his opponents simply only need to gaze upon him to fall into that state of complete fear and despair that his ability brings with it. He can also create a large black dome full of eyes that ensnares his opponents so that they will never be able to avoid his gaze, keeping them in a constant state of fear. He can also undergo a fearsome transformation when his body begins to absorb the eyes from the fear ability. Lil Toto's designation is G, which stands for the glutton. The glutton, or gluttonous when translated, is a power that allows Lil Toto to consume anything by manipulating and shifting her own mouth into an extended form. Her mouth transforms into this huge jaw with many jagged teeth, which she can move to eat whatever she wishes. The downside to her ability is that it leaves her in a constant state of hunger. Now, Lil Toto's spirit weapon is a holy bow that is you know, very short and often kept in a heart container that she wears on her belt. Her bow has a heart at its center with the two arms that branch out of it. The cool thing is the bow actually resembles that of a closed set of jaws with jagged teeth that looks very similar to a bear trap. The holy arrows she fires from her bow are, of course, very powerful. When she fires an arrow from her bow, the jaw opens when firing. So her vol standing gifted her two very tiny wings that look like teeth. I liked these ones a lot. These wings, of course, give her the ability of flight at high speeds. Baz B is the stern ritter with the letter H as his designation, which stands for the heat. The heat, or scorching heat when translated, is the ability to generate flames and launch them at his opponents by manipulating the reishi in the air. 
So these frames are that powerful that they actually managed to counter the flames of Yamamoto's Ryujin Jaka. He has multiple abilities, including Burner Finger 1, where he can shoot out a narrow beam of fire from his finger. Burner Finger 2 is where Baz B concentrates the power of his flames into two of his fingers. He then swings his fingers that creates a large explosion of destructive damage. Burner Finger 3 is where he generates heat in three of his fingers, which can melt any structure he touches with his fingers and turns that into lava. Burner Finger 4 is a large blade of fire that is created when he points all of his fingers forwards. He can then slash his opponents with this fire blade, causing large explosions. Burning Full Fingers is a spiraling cone of flames that is unleashed when he generates fire around all five of his fingertips. Finally, there is Burning Stomp, which is basically a large release of heat and fire when he stomps his foot on the ground. So, Baz B's spirit weapon is that of a crossbow with the hilt of a handgun. Shot much like a Quincy bow, the power of his crossbow and holy arrows is enough to blow a large hole through a wall. Now, his vol standing gives him two wings that are shaped like two rods. With said wings, he can fly at very high speeds through the air. His vol standing also greatly enhances his own speed, allowing him to attack his enemies before they can even have a chance to react. As well as his speed, his Burner Finger 1 ability is also enhanced as he can fire multiple beams of fire in very short succession. Sang Du is the stern written with the letter I as his designation, which stands for the iron. The iron is an ability that allows him to coat his own body in iron. He can partially cover areas of his skin or cover his entire body if he so wishes. Now, this iron is incredibly strong and durable and is able to withstand the strongest of attacks. Not only is this ability an amazing form of defense, but it can be used offensively too. So, by covering himself in iron, he can charge straight at his enemy, delivering a very strong knockout blow upon contact. So, his spirit weapon are a pair of reishi claws. They each have four extremely strong curved blades, which he wears on his wrists. And he uses a move called Snake Claw, where he points his arm at his enemy and places one fist over the other. Doing this, he shoots energy blasts straight at his opponent that look like a snake's head. He did also have a vol standing, but we don't have a lot of information on it other than that it was strong enough to break him free of the ice prison that Captain Hitsugai had trapped him within. OP is the executive hunting captain with the designation of J, which stands for the jail. The jail allows OP to close the gateways between dimensions using reishi constructs. He can also use this ability to create reishi cages that will trap and ensnare his enemies. Now, once a person is trapped within one of his reishi cages, their presence becomes sealed off from the outside and they can't be detected. They can hear the voices of everyone outside of the cage, but they cannot be heard themselves. So, OP's spirit weapon is a reishi sword that looks like that of a military saber. Not only that, but he also has small reishi daggers. Using his Reishi sword, Opie can fire holy arrows from extensions from the sword's guard. These arrows are powerful enough to create explosions upon impact, and he can fire up to six arrows at the same time. Now, his vol standing is called Biskil, which is Japanese for Justice of God. In this form, OP gains numerous accessories that are all made from Reishi, including boots, gauntlets, a sword that comes out of his right hand, and of course, a pair of angelic-looking wings. His vol standing gives him the ability of flight, enhanced spiritual awareness, enhanced speed, and complete reishi dominance, allowing him to absorb large amounts of reishi that he can then form into a powerful attack from the tip of his sword. Opie also has an ability called Holy Slave, in which he can gather reishi by enslaving it. He can take the reishi from spiritual objects and make it his own, and in doing so, even takes on the characteristics and capabilities of his victims. BG9 is the stern ritter with the designation of K, though we do not know what the K stands for, nor the power that he has been given. We do know that his spirit weapon is a large 10 barreled minigun that fires out some powerful blasts. We also know he has a vol standing, however, we do not know exactly what it does. Wakabrada's designation is the letter L, which stands for the love. The Love is an ability that allows him to shoot a heart-shaped projectile at his opponent by putting his own hands together in the shape of a heart. 
anyone that is hit by this projectile falls in love with him and become like so obsessed by him that they will do absolutely anything that he asks of them, which could include things such as attacking their own allies. He also has a move called Love Kiss, which works exactly the same, where he puts his hands together in the shape of a heart and fires a projectile, except this projectile is like that of a normal attack rather than a mind controlling one. His spirit weapon is, of course, a holy bow. His bow is very small with a thick handle that you know, he will manifest by pulling it out of his mouth. The arrows are also manifested by him pulling them out of his mouth as well, which unique. Let's let's go with let's go with the word unique there. So his vol standing is called God's love. He activates his vol standing by drawing a heart shape in the air with his hands and his transformation makes him look like a very, very ugly cupid. Abilities in his vol standing include that of enhanced durability, flight and a technique called love rope, where he will manifest a floating basket with many ropes made up of linked hearts. These ropes he then throws at his opponent and upon stabbing them, they become completely immobilized. Gerard Valkyrie is not only one of Yuha's shoot stuffle, but also the heart of the Soul King. Gerard is the stern ritter with the designation of M, which stands for the Miracle. The Miracle is an ability that Gerard already possessed prior to becoming a stern ritter. He himself has described his power as the power to create miracles on himself through thoughts, feelings, and his own desires. Now, his ability allows him to swing the tide in his favor through probability manipulation. If Gerard is in a battle where the odds are strongly stacked against him, the miracle allows him to succeed regardless of how bad a situation he is in. He also has a really crazy ability called Damage Empowerment, where he can turn any attacks that cause damage to him, including those that would be lethal, into his own power, be it you know strength, speed, and even control over his own size. Now, when it comes to manipulating his own size, he calls the power God's size, and the bigger that he becomes, the more lethal his destructive powers wither. His final ability is tied into one of his spirit weapons, Hoffnung, which is German for the word hope, and Japanese for sword of hope. Hoffnung is a black double-edged sword that's hilt is in the shape of a V with a star at its center. So the miracle's last power is hope infusing. What happens here is Gerard manifests the hope of his enemies into his sword, making it near unbreakable. Any damage that the sword takes is reflected and then dealt back to the attacker. His other spirit weapon is a holy bow that is gold in color with two handles. He fires huge holy arrows from his bow, which he refers to as pure torrents of power. Now, Gerard's vol standing is called power of God. Here he gains a Norse looking helmet, thick patterns on his arms and golden white angelic wings. In this form, he can fire off energy blasts from the tip of his sword that are powerful enough to completely wipe out entire blocks of cities. Gerard also has a second vol standing form where his body is reformed. His helmet is now like that of a medieval knight and has two huge spikes on his shoulders. Robert Accutron is the stern ritter with the designation of the letter N. Unfortunately, we do not know what the N stands for, nor the powers that come with it. We do know that Robert's spirit weapon is that of a reishi pistol that looks like a handgun capable of producing muzzle flashes. He can also fire off holy arrows or bullets, I guess you could say, from the barrel of his pistol that, though small, still deliver a huge amount of destructive power. His vol standing is called God Step, where he is granted a collection of Reishi accessories, including wings that gift him the power of flight, as well as enhancing his own speed greatly. Driscoll is the stern ritter with the letter O as his designation, which stands for the Overkill. The Overkill is an ability that grants Driscoll an increase on his own power each time that he kills an opponent. Regardless of the opponent, the more he kills, the stronger he becomes. Now, his spirit weapon is a pair of Teko bands, worn on his hands that he can shoot holy arrows from. His arrows are different, however, as they are huge in size. So huge, in fact, that he throws his arrows more like that of a javelin. The force of these throws are also insanely incredible, so much so that they can take out a normal Shinigami with complete ease. Meninas is the stern ritter with the designation P, which stands for the power. Her ability is in that of superhuman strength. 
Her strength and power are so great that her punches are completely devastating. Alongside this, many Nas can pick up and throw very large buildings with complete ease, and if she so chooses, she can dramatically increase the size of her own muscles even more if she needs more power. Her spirit weapon is a bow. She also keeps her bow in a small heart-shaped container on her belt. The arrows that she shoots from her bows all have heart-shaped tips. Many Nas's vol standing gives her wings that allow her to fly at great speeds. Her wings are made up of large heart-shaped segments. Berenice is the stern ritter with the letter Q as their designation, which stands for the question. Now, we do not know an awful lot about their powers and abilities other than the question allows Bernice to harm their opponents by objecting their existence or actions. Berenice's power does not work, however, if they are unable to fully speak and is also ineffective against those who can't fully hear them talking. Jerome's designation is the letter R, which stands for the Roar. The Roar allows Jerome to increase his size even more than he already is and has a more ape-like theme about himself. In this form, he can drastically increase the force of his roars, which in turn produces large destructive shockwaves that hurtle towards his opponents. This ability has proven to be a lot more effective on the lower ranking Soul Reapers, which has mutilated and in some cases even killed them. However, the Roar isn't all that effective against the higher ranking Soul Reapers, such as Kenpachi, who was you know, only temporarily deafened by the ability. Mask de Masculine is the stern written with the letter S as his designation, which stands for the Superstar. If Masculine has at least one person cheering him on, he gains a considerable boost in stamina and strength, enough to take on two captain-leveled Soul Reapers and send them flying in just a single strike. Not only does he gain strength and stamina, but his durability and regenerative powers also skyrocket. With enough cheers, his mask changes and he takes on a more pro-wrestler look that seriously amps up his power. He calls this Star Power Up. Masculine can shoot a star-shaped beam from this mask, uh, again a move he calls Star Flash. Star Murder Punch is a huge punch that is insanely powered up. When his mask becomes enraged, a black star appears on the back of his fist, which increases the strength of his punches by up to 10 times, releasing star-shaped energy bursts. He has also called this move the Hammer of Justice. Star Lariat, or One Mile Arts as he refers to it, is another punch that he is said to have sent his opponent one mile away when he has received enough cheers. He also has a few other kind of awesomely named attacks including Star Eagle Kick, Star Headbutt, Star Rocket Headbutt, and Star Drop Kick. I, gotta, I, I appreciate the theme there, I like that. Now, not really a power, but Masculine always has James follow him into battle. James is a small, bold man who carries a bell with him. James has a huge amount of respect for Masculine, and with what we know of Masculine's powers, we know that James is with him to amp up his powers while in combat. Finally, Masculine's vol standing gives Masculine a huge power-up that is again activated upon receiving cheers from James. Like the other vol standings, Masculine gains a pair of wings that allow him to fly, but he also gains the move Star Flash Supernova. Here, Masculine flies way up into the sky and draws a huge pentagram using the Reishi Trail from his wings. Once drawn out, he flies above the pentagram and calls out the name of this attack, which sends a huge star-shaped energy attack to the ground, which erupts in monstrous destructive power. Candice Catnip is the stern ritter with the letter T as her designation, which stands for the Thunderbolt. As the name suggests, Candice can create and control the power of lightning. She will often manipulate and create these lightning bolts in her hands and then point in the direction she wants the attack to go. She can also generate powerful lightning attacks from the sky to rain down on her opponent. Not only can she use lightning for attacking, but she can also use it for evasion as she can turn her own body into lightning itself to dodge incoming attacks. So her spirit weapon is that of a bow with a heart shape at its center. She can fire powerful holy arrows from her bow that have lightning jagged edges and if she so chooses she can also fire blasts of electricity from the bow too. Candice's vol standing is of course electricity based. Her wings are six lightning bolts sprouting from her back which allow her to fly through the air. 
She also gains lightning swords, but these swords are actually the same lightning bolts on her back. She literally just pulls them off her back and can wield one in each hand. These swords are great for close combat, but she can also turn them into javelins by throwing them, so she is just as effective at long-range combat. Candice also has Electrical Destruction Punishment, which is where she summons a huge column of electrical energy around her that she will then concentrate around her arm and throw at her opponent. Naja Koops' letter of designation is U, which stands for the Underbelly. The Underbelly, also known as Defenseless, is an ability that allows him to analyze the Ryatsu of a specific target for a, a, an amount of time, let's say. Here he can determine that person's spirit power distribution and will imprint his letter on his target in a grid that he can pinpoint holes in and target their Ryatsu and then attack them, causing them to be rendered unconscious or paralyze them. The power of this ability is, of course, all dependent on how much time he has spent analyzing that target's Ryatsu. The more time he has, the stronger his ability. Grimmy is the stern ritter with the letter V as his designation, which stands for the Visionary. The Visionary, also known as Dreamer, is an ability where Grimmy can turn fantasy into reality. For example, if he believes that his body is more sturdy than steel, then his body's defense is drastically increased. A really awesome way of using this ability is if he were to suffer any wounds. If he imagines that the wounds have been healed, then that becomes reality and his wounds are healed. It's crazy. Not only can he affect his own body, but he can imagine things such as lava, stone pillars, water, etc. You know, all these elements to attack his enemy and these elements will manifest. He can also summon forth weapons and even change the battlefield to his liking. Now, Grammy Grace's power is life creation. Grammy can create life with his imagination. He used it on himself to create clones, boosting the power of his own imagination, allowing him to create stronger objects, including a huge, huge meteorite. Now, there are, of course, downsides, and downsides to his awesome power include things such as his own concentration. If his attention shifts from his target, then they could potentially return to their original state. Also, his imagination can betray him, if he is not careful, he could accidentally imagine bad things happening to himself, which of course will become reality. Neon Soul's designation is the letter W, which stands for the wind. The wind, which is also known as twist and turns, is an ability that allows him to deflect attacks away from the targets of his choosing. This ability, however, only allows him to redirect the attacks and not counter them, but nonetheless is still a very impressive ability that has caused swords to just bend away from their intended targets. The wind can also be used offensively too, but can be very nasty. Now, by moving his fingers towards his opponent, he can cause the wind to cut his desired target clean in half by making each opposing end bend away from itself. Lily Barrow is the leader of Yuha's Shootstaffle and has the letter X as his designation, which stands for the X axis. The X-Axis, which is also Japanese for piercing everything, is an ability that allows his rifle to, you know, pierce through absolutely everything within its line of sight. His attacks cannot be blocked by any defense. Lily can also use the full power of the X-Axis when both of his eyes are open. Now, Lily himself said that the full potential of his power allows even his own body to pass through enemy attacks. And he actually keeps his left eye closed as he believes his power is unfair on his opponents. Talk about confidence in yourself, right? So it comes as no surprise that his spirit weapon is that of a rifle, going off what we have discussed with the X-axis. His rifle is huge in its appearance and fires holy arrows or bullets in this case that are strong enough to completely wipe out the cities surrounding the Soul King Palace with just a single shot. These bullets are all so powerful due to the highly compressed reishi that they are made of. So, Lily's vol standing is called Divine Judgment, and the appearance of this thing is insane. Its most noticeable standout thing are the huge feathery white reishi wings. These wings give you know, him the ability of both flight and teleportation. In his vol standing, the X-axis ability is also enhanced as he can shoot beams of energy from the holes in his wings at his target. Now, if he fires from the six holes at the same time, the destructive power is enough to wipe out entire cities. In this form, he is pretty much untouchable. Lily also has a second form in his vol standing that will regenerate any lost limbs he suffered, and that's if he was attacked somehow. 
Not only does this form look incredible, but it comes with some gnarly abilities, including Ray of Judgment, which are waves of energy that are fired from his wrists and forearms. He can create a large ball of light that erases all of the nearby shadows and has a move called Trumpet of God, where Lily can create a huge trumpet made of Reishi that fires huge energy blasts of destructive force. Lloyd and Royd are identical twin brothers who share the designation of Y, which stands for the Yourself. The Yourself ability allows the brothers to transform themselves into an exact physical likeness of another person. So Lloyd's version allows him to copy the spirit power and abilities of a person, and Royd's version allows him to copy the memories and personality of the individual. Now, Royd's spirit weapon is a Reishi sword that is exactly like Yuha's ornate sword due to impersonating Yuha. Royd can fire holy arrows just like Yuha from the palm of his hands. These arrows are larger than normal Quincy arrows, though they can still be fired with extreme force. Gazelle is the final stern ritter in this video. So her letter of designation is Z or Z, which stands for the zombie. Her power is a control based power in which anything and anyone that her own blood is splattered on falls completely under her own control. So the stronger the opponent she wants to control, the more of her own blood she has to spill on that specific target. Now, those under her control become corpses and she can order said corpses to do her bidding. The power of the zombie does not work on other Quincy, however, unless that Quincy has already died. And when it comes to the Quincy, though, Gazelle can actually summon the corpses of dead Quincy whenever she pleases and activate their abilities remotely. Gazelle also has a very interesting and kind of creepy healing technique where she can use the power of the zombie to heal her comrades by replacing their wounded flesh or limbs with that of the deceased. So her spirit weapon is that of a short bow that has a heart at the center of it. The arms that branch out of the bow are skeletal to match her zombie-like theme. She fires powerful arrows from her bow that have skulls as their tips. Finally, Gazelle's vol standing gave her skeletal reishi wings that gifted her the ability of flight. And that is it, every Stern Ritter's power and ability from Bleach explained. Now, I'm a huge fan of the Stern Ritter. I just think their designs are really awesome. And I like the uniqueness of their powers. I think as villains come in Bleach, these guys are seriously underrated. I think they make a very solid addition to the Bleach series. Definitely make sure to let us know in the comment section below who your favorite Stern Ritter is and which one you thought looked the best design wise. Of course, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more Bleach videos on the channel, make sure to let us know by smashing that like button. It really does help us out with that YouTube algorithm. If you haven't, make this the video you subscribe and hit the notification bell to turn on all notifications or you will miss future anime uproar videos. Remember, you can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at anime uproar. Thanks again, and we really can't wait to see you in the next one. Till next time, my friends, you take care of yourselves. Peace.